Hello everyone. Let's begin by lighting a candle. A reminder that we're bringing ourselves into the presence of God. Can't see it. There it is. And now I'll begin with a prayer based on a portion of Psalm 71. God, thank you for the promise of springtime in my life. I will wait patiently through the difficult seasons and hope earnestly in your faithfulness. Amen. Well, I wonder how you're making out with thinking in terms of image, bringing yourself into the presence an awareness of your personal images. I wonder if you've thought any further about sleeping with bread, those images that are important to you. Today I want to talk a little bit more about the examine. This is going to come out back to front, I know. It's called The Ignatian Examine, a very smallish book written by Mark Thirabo. I find it interesting because Ignatius wrote the exercises in a period of time between 1522 and 1524, and the examine was part of his overall approach to being in relationship with God. So the language that Ignatius used many years ago was very different to modern language. And in my time working with my spiritual director, she would often bring very contemporary words to explain the steps. And obviously, all of us have different interests and our motivation is probably the same, but we probably respond differently to different ways of thinking about our experience. And so in Thirabo's beautiful little book, there are a total of 34 different ways of thinking about the same steps. When we come to the examine, there's always getting ourselves into the space, getting ready by doing something like lighting a candle, centering our awareness, and then moving gradually, peacefully through the steps and seeing what emerges. I'll tell you in broader terms, broadish terms, what the steps are. The first is to relish or asking God to reveal to the self, me or you, the gifts and graces that have been given for the day. So we start with the proposition that in the day there have been gifts. They might be hard to find in this lockdown and I'm finding myself frustrated by the um, sameness of every day and so we actually have to work hard at thinking about those things. So first step, relish. The things that we find as gifts might be a particularly good cup of tea, a phone call, a lovely email, a job done. Something that we can give thanks for in that day. And if there's nothing particularly that's happened, you might be able just to pause and reflect on the goodness that's in your life, finding something. After relishing that first step, the second one is to request. Knowing that I need God's help to see my darker side, I need to look for the perspective of God's merciful love. We ask God to fill us with his spirit. So that in that second step or phase, we're actually asking God to lead us to be the initiator through the prayer time. And that's really about shutting down all those other things that come into our mind. I find that very hard sometimes. 
this is prayer time. Stop the monkey chatter that's going on up here and get myself into that place where God can initiate in me. So that's the second step. First, relish. Second, request. Then there's a third step. And this is a bit like using your experience of the day like a movie camera. Can you get up, go back to that first time in the morning when you woke? What was on your mind? What were you thinking? What did you do? And to go back and see in your mind's eye everything that happened to the point where you are in that day. If you're doing it early in the morning, uh, I'm at mid, just after midday now, I think I could go back and think of all of the things that I have done. Some things we might say, not important, I put the washing up, I swept up around the back door, but there might be something that was far more important and you can linger on those. So, first relish, Second, request, ask God to be the initiator. And third, review, what were the things that happened? Fourth step, I repent. We look at the day and continue thanking God for all the gifts that we found there, but pause at any difficult moments for the day. When I had a bad thought, said something I shouldn't, or where something that I did was inappropriate. And pay attention also to missed opportunities. What could I have done in this situation, or perhaps any other situation, to make this a more God-centred day? So we're looking for missed opportunities as well. I try to sense God's healing and mercy washing over me. And making me whole in that fourth step. So again, relish, request, review, repent. And then a fifth step. This one is resolve. I resolve. With what I've learned during this prayer time, about myself and my life, I ask God to show me concretely how he wants me to respond and what he wants me to do tomorrow. So we don't have to think long term, this week, this month, this year, but tomorrow. I ask God to show me what kind of person God is calling me to be tomorrow. And then we conclude in a way that develops as a sort of ritual. It might be to say the Our Father. It might be to say the Grace. Something that brings your prayer time to a conclusion. So there are many, many different ways to find our way way to navigate those five steps using different words, but they are essentially what the steps are. So I suppose what I enjoy about this, when I am disciplined enough to make myself stop and do it, is that it brings me into contact with God now. Because God is always waiting for us. God is always in the present moment. But our lives become so fractured and so busy and... At times we can feel so stressed by all the tasks ahead that we lose that thread. We lose that connection. So I wonder if you would like to try those steps and uh, have a go at doing the exam. I hope that that's helpful to you many, many different ways to go about it. I suppose there's one more thing I might mention to you, another one of um, Ignatius' important ideas, 
And it's about being spiritually free and being spiritually unfree. When we're free, our spirit, spiritual and emotional state is being in a healthy form. We're spiritually free when we're emotionally well balanced and desirous of being faithful and hopeful. But we're unfree, spiritually unfree, when we let our negative emotions and temptations get the better of us. And we're too angry, sad, tempted to really think straight. And we're often unfree when we're lethargic and not inspired to be more faithful and hopeful and loving. And we're unfree when we don't let God, we don't feel God's presence in the moment. So that's something um, for us to reflect on over the day too. Are we free in what's happening or are we unfree and swamped? This isn't to deny the important part that naming our experience has for each of us. When we are frustrated and angry and upset, and uh, I've been in that spot over the last week, I took to my journal and drew some pictures. And as I drew those pictures, I started to think about speaking as parts of the picture, about the colour, about the shape, about the emotion and it was really looking objectively at that and allowing it to come down on the page so that I could look at it and think about it that I actually found a healing way through it and that of course is something that we can share with God this is how I'm feeling so hopefully as you identify your feelings the movement from unfreedom into freedom or liberation might happen. So something else for you to think about. So I hope that you might be encouraged to have a little go at the examine now that I've given you some more detailed steps. Take it gently. Don't be cross if you find moving from one phase to the next is difficult and that you don't have a grasp of the whole. The wonderful thing about the examine and doing it from da daily and week to week is that you might see that there's a pattern. You might see that there's a particular image that's coming through, something there for you to work with God on, something that's of importance. Because we're not, God doesn't want us to beat ourselves up, doesn't want us to be angry and upset by our failings and limitations. But God is here to extend relationship with us so that we know that we're not alone in anything that happens. So let me close with a little prayer. Loving God, be with us as we contemplate the possibility of examining our daily work. Encourage us. Give us strength, let us wonder, and help us to know that you are with us in every moment of every day. Amen. So, I leave this with you and talk with you again next time. Bye for now.